Hello, so I did an experiment um, maybe two years ago where I was repeating a classic experiment by Robert Hooke from, what, I don't know, 1600s or something, a long time ago. And he took some iron filings. I have some iron filings here, just regular fine iron filings. And he tossed them through a candle flame and he looked at the results and he made these, these little, little spheres, which are iron-rich microspheres, a combination of various quantities of iron and iron oxide because of the, uh, they, they essentially combust in the flame and that melts the iron and melts the iron oxide, forms these tiny little spheres, microspheres. And this is the type of thing that architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth say is um, evidence in the dust of, uh, of thermite being used. And you must have had a much hotter heat source for you to get 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit in order to melt the iron to get these molten spheres. And so if there are other reasons, other ways that can be created, like the rust or the flecks of iron falling off iron bars and into flames and being combusted into these spheres, then that kind of shows that there are other ways of creating these iron microspheres. But a couple of years after I did this article and the talk I gave, there's a, there's a video online, Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth, one of the guys went through my video point by point and he was saying that, you know, you're wrong about this, wrong about this, wrong about this. And one of the things he said was that a candle, which is the thing Hook used, is a lot hotter than the, the flames in the World Trade Center, which uh, if you kind of look it up, it, it kind of makes sense because paper and wood burn at lower temperatures than a candle. A candle doesn't produce very much heat. And the experiments I were doing were with things like uh, uh, candles and butane lighters, which are faster, uh, uh, which are hotter. Like if you take some iron filings, you take this, this lighter and you drop them through, you'll see all those sparks are creating iron microspheres. You collect them with a magnet and you get these tiny little spheres. So the, the point that uh, Chris Sands, Chris Sands is the guy's name who has wrote this article, is making is that this isn't the same thing because I'm using a candle, which is super hot, whereas the World Trade Center fires were less hot. Now, I don't know about the exact temperatures of the World Trade Center fi fires, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that at some point, some of the temperatures got uh, above the temperature of a candle uh, because there's a lot of different things that are burning inside there, including plastics, which uh, probably burn hotter. But, you know, we can argue about that. But what if it was just wood? What if I just use this piece of wood? This is a bit of two by four. Got it from Home Depot, typical wood used in construction. It's uh, Douglas fir, I believe. And I'm going to try uh, just lighting it and sprinkling some uh, iron filings on it. I haven't done this before. Uh, although I did do it years ago with some paper because Tony Zambotti had the same objection. So there's my iron filings. Here's my bit of wood. And I'm going to light it. So this essentially is just a building fire because it is just some wood burning. And I'm going to try the exact same result. The iron filings are actually burning because they are being raised above their combustion point. And they actually combust and that's what's creating these iron rich microspheres with a combination of uh, you know, iron and iron oxide. And you'll see this if you just simply collect them with a magnet, uh, I've got a magnet right here. You can collect these things with a magnet from underneath. You still get a lot of the iron filings. I usually run them through a couple of times. Whoop. Recombust the ones that it missed. Collect them with a magnet. Look at this under a microscope. You're gonna find lots of iron rich microspheres because they're magnetic. So where I was uh, demonstrating with the candle, was in fact uh, perfectly valid, because it's not about melting steel. You can't really melt steel with a candle. Least, uh, I don't think you could, you probably need uh, several million candles, several thousand, lots of candles, you need lots of candles to melt a quantity of steel, but it's not, it's not melting the steel here in this situation with this little bit of wood. It is in fact just uh, igniting the iron filings. In exactly the same way the steel wool is ignited uh, and burns by itself, and you can ignite it with a match or a piece of paper or anything like that, it's uh, not melting, it's combusting. And this is something that Chris totally failed to understand in this paper that he wrote 
for architects and engineers from 9-11 Truth. And it was actually quite a bit, a, quite a large part of his rebuttal. So I think it kind of shows the, the uh, hmm, quality of argument in that rebuttal. And I could go through all the other things in it, but uh, I would first of all encourage Chris to respond to this and hopefully take that out of the article. So I'd raised some of these objections with uh, Chris Sands on Facebook and he uh, didn't really address the issue of burning and melting, but he did complain that I didn't show any iron microspheres uh, from my Kendall experiment. Uh, I think the reason was that I, you only get a few, you only get like a very small percentage because it's very hard when you're tossing uh, the iron filings through a tiny flame with a knife. Um, this time I dropped the iron filings through a few times onto this little magnet. And I'm going to try now with my microscope, taking some of those uh, iron filings, iron, iron microspheres, hopefully. I'm sure it's a combination. And I'm going to stick them on this bit of bit of sticky paper, which is the kind of the usual way I collect iron microspheres. So we've got this little thing here, and this was the original magnet. All right, so I'll stick that under the microscope. I don't have my light set up on the side here, but let me just hold one with my hand. And let's see what we can see. So here we have a combination of uh, iron filings and the iron microspheres. Isn't that many iron microspheres again? Because you know you're just tossing it through a small flame. Uh, let's, let's see if we can find one or two and have a closer look at them. Let's zoom in here. There's a nice sphere shape there. And uh, oops, there's another one there. Lots of kind of semi-molten bits of iron as well. And there's a few, there's a little sphere there. And a big molten blob there. Oh, there's a lovely one, look at that. Giant iron microsphere. Looks like a classic. And there's a tiny little one down there. Yeah, that's like a big blob, let's see. Yeah, but there was some more over here. There you go, that's a nice one. Right in the middle there. So there you go. Iron microspheres. And uh, from a wood flame.